This week on Paddle Tales, we're continuing the adventure in Killarney Provincial Park, one of the most dramatic parks in Eastern North America. Now that we're deep into the backcountry, our next mission is to paddle and portage our way to a trail that will lead us to Silver Peak, the highest point in the park. Getting there won't be easy though, as we've got miles of water to cover and a whole lot of portaging to do, including a two mile beast. Before we dive right into it though, please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already and follow us on Facebook and Instagram because we have lots more Paddle Tales episodes along with paddling tips and more coming your way. Paddle Tales is brought to you in part by NRS, Aquabound, Swift Canoes, and Ontario Creates. Well, the adventure continues. Day three in Killarney Provincial Park. Just had a beautiful night in a lake called Gale Lake. Super clear water. Now we're on our way to David Lake and our mission is to hike to Silver Peak, the highest point in Killarney Provincial Park. But to get there, we've got to do a heck of a portage. It's about three kilometers, two miles. Probably knowing Killarney Park, there's gonna be some ups and downs, but it will be worth it. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. You're not really rowing the boat, right? No. That's not a boat, it's a canoe. This is an iconic watercraft, not it just is. a boat, a canoe. Yeah. They went to the carbon forest and they stripped the carbon bark off the carbon tree. <laughs> you just don't find those carbon trees <laughs> like you used to. No. They clear cut them. That's why was that, like 50 years ago? That's why the carbon boats are expensive. Yeah. The trees are there. Portage should be somewhere around here. Uh, uh -huh. yellow, da -da, yep, yellow sign. There it is. Follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, sir. I think you want to take your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we got rain coming. Never rains on these adventures. That's crazy. Pretty sure he put something in my backpack. The first half of the trip here had a lot of portages and they were a lot of work. I mean, this is not easy terrain to get around on. These are mountains. These are Eastern mountains, but they're mountains. And so the idea of a two mile portage, that's a little daunting. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Let it begin. Going up. Going up. We didn't have a lot of gear, but we had enough gear to make things a little bit heavy and a little bit awkward. I mean, the ideal scenario is you just make one trip through the portage, especially the longer ones. The shorter ones, you can kind of leave stuff behind and make your way through, drop everything down, and both of us run back and get the, the next load. Uh, but this long one, we wanted to make sure that we can do it in one shot. As a paddler, canoe tripping originally for me was paddling and then having to do these portages to get to the next paddling location. But, you know, canoe tripping really isn't about that. Canoe tripping is really a cool mix of paddling and backpacking. And once you realize that, that the portaging isn't just the, the necessary evil <laughs> to get to the next lake to paddle, that it's part of the adventure and it can be just as enjoyable as the paddling portion, then, you know, it changes how you look at the whole trip. Go, go, mountain goat legs. Oh, crap. 
Everybody has the role when it comes role, role to play when it comes to these trips, and and uh, a lot of times uh, we kind of fall into those roles naturally. I wonder if James is still in one piece. Send him ahead to to get a head start, which really means go on bear patrol. Of course, he didn't know that. But he's the perfect bear patroller because he has a tendency of entertaining himself. In the jungle, the piney jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. There will be no wildlife within half a mile when James is going down the trail. This is exactly where you expect to see a moose. It looks like someone's put in here. This like is it. Often. Yeah, no, this is definitely it. Oh! It goes for a bit. Huh. Looking at the map, there's this section of the Portage Trail which had this body of water alongside it. And there's real potential to hop in and cut out a bunch of the portage. And if there's an opportunity to paddle instead of carry the boat on my head, I'm going for it. You know what? Let's take the canoe. Do a quick run. Do a little scouting scout. trip. Yeah, it's worth it. It is also shallow here. Are we gonna get out? Oh know. yeah. No, no, we're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All Let's right. do a scouting mish. Get some speed going here. Yeah, I think we can make it through. I think the. Oh, yeah, it looks like we can. We can get through there. Looks like it was busted a while ago. We gotta get some speed though. We might be bumping over a log or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shallow. Oh, and yeah. Oh, yeah. Deep. There we go. Now we're. Uh oh. We really cut a good bit of both time and effort off of our trip just by taking that little bit of an expedition, side expedition, taking a guess at it. Um, I mean, we, I, th I think we cut a good hour off of our, of our hike. Just think, Ken, we could have been walking all the way up over there. <laughs> yep. Really feels like we're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I, it does a little. It does feel like we're cheating a little. I'm okay with it. I'm totally okay with it, in fact. All right, let's get her up there. Is that it? Oh yeah, that's yep, it. This is the trail here. Sweet. So back in the trail. We're pretty spoiled using super lightweight canoes on this trip. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that long ago that in order to do this trip, people would have to use beast of canoes. Canoes that were at least twice the weight of these. So it's hard to complain. Even though it's still a lot of work, it's hard to complain. Wow. We have water. <laughs> nice. Ooh, at the lake. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. We made it. David Lake at Portage. I mean, it was a grind, but it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought I was gonna be. Now we just need to find camp. Big home for the night. How far is the camp? <laughs> <laughs> I could sleep now. <laughs> okay, we're not we're not far. Not far. That was good. Nice to get into camp before six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I've always had a love-hate relationship with mornings. I love the mornings once I'm up and I have a cup of hot coffee in hand, but I hate the getting up process. 
after seemingly just putting up a tent, you're taking one down. Well, it's cold. It's a cold day to get an early start, but an early start we need to get because we got a pretty big day. We have to paddle a ways and uh, it looks like some beautiful country we're gonna paddle through, but then we're getting to a hike and that's the challenge today. We got a pretty big hike ahead of us. We're going to the highest point in Clarney Provincial Park called Silver Peak. Like a gazelle. Thanks, campsite. I love to fish. And every given chance, that's what I'm gonna do. And I didn't bother asking Ken. I'm a ask for forgiveness versus permission kind of guy. And well, uh, the bad news is I was fishing, not catching. Should probably help paddle for a little bit. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We don't really go any faster when you're paddling. <laughs> you might as well fish. He's just saying that he doesn't really mean it. Every backcountry trip seems to have this particularly memorable wildlife moment. And we were expecting maybe to see uh, some bear or uh, moose or, or what have you on this trip. We weren't expecting the most memorable moment to be the loons. You're always trying to kind of see how close you can get, you know. And we did that, we stopped and cruised, but it didn't go down. We kind of went, you know, a couple more strokes, thinking that that for sure, those paddle strokes for sure are gonna set it off and it's gonna go under, still didn't go down. And then it kind of did this little celebration. It was almost a welcome. Awesome. Putting on a show. That was cool. Do it again, do it again. Wait. No, I was talking to the loon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Loon. How far are we going? It's about three miles. You want to see? Sure. We are here. We're going. Highest point in the park, Silver Peak. Just don't take us to that one. <laughs> yeah, we're not going that way. It's yeah. about three miles. Well, all right, let's give her. What I love about back country trips is that they aren't just this single adventure. They're all these little adventures that when you put them together, it makes this incredible experience. And this final adventure, that we have, it's gonna be hard, but I know once we get to the top, it's absolutely gonna be worth it. So the cool part about this part of the trip is we had nothing on our shoulders. I had my water bottle and that's it. I didn't have a bucket in front of me and a big backpack on the back of me, and I didn't have Ken grunt, grunting behind me with his canoe. There we go. That's, <laughs> That's a million dollar view. Okay, we're not gonna make it very far with all these view stops. I like it though. Well, we're reaching the end of another adventure. Another big day out here. Yeah, it's a, it's a big park everything I expected it to be and more. God, I love this place. As we approach Silver Peak, it's impossible to ignore the conflicting emotions. 
although we'll still need to hike down, camp, and paddle out tomorrow, there's no denying that our journey is reaching its end. And while I'm confident this won't be the last adventure that James and I tackle together, as I get older, I find myself more appreciative of every trip that I get to share with friends and family, and more saddened when they come to an end. But those thoughts can wait, because at this moment, I'm literally on top of the world, at the highest point in Killarney Park, and there's nowhere else I'd rather be. That one looks higher. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, almost nowhere. <laughs>